What's up everyone? In this video, I want to talk about four of my favorite 3D printers, some of the upgrades that I have done, and some of the pros and cons on them. I have received all these printers from GearBest except for the Creality CR10. I purchased this one myself over a year ago and probably put the most money into this printer. All the other printers were sent to me by GearBest. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So here I have the Creality Ender 3, a printer that I've only had for one week and I have been printing on it non-stop and I, I grabbed this print because I just got done printing this um, and it turned out very gorgeous. This is with PLA and it, it turned out really nice. So this was 0.2 resolution and it is just gorgeous. Right here is PETG and it turned out really well except for the top and that's because I learned that if you put the bed above 80 degrees this glue starts to just melt and peel right off and so the bed started peeling off in the middle of the print hence the top of it came off but it is very capable of printing with PETG uh, right now I am printing with Saint Smart's TPU and I have to say, just uh, looking at the print, it is turning out really good. And at the end of this video, I'll show off this, this print. I'm very happy that this printer is able to print TPU stock. Because there are a lot of printers that will not print TPU stock. So my future upgrades for this printer is probably just going to be a glass bed. I don't plan on doing anything else. I was thinking about putting a auto level system in it, but it is the Creality stock Melzy board in here, which means I would have to bootload it and take it all apart and all that kind of stuff. But right now it is printing so nice. The bed level only took me maybe about five minutes to level the bed, which is the reason why I'm not going to even bother with an auto level system. I may put an additional fan on this side so it's getting airflow on both sides. I don't know. Again, it is printing at my expectations so I might not even touch it or do anything to it. So that, that is the Creality Ender 3. If you are a little tech savvy and you're getting into 3D printing and you can follow on instructions, this is a nice price printer for you. I foresee this printer being a very popular printer in the, in the future. Just because of the price and the features that it comes with. One feature I forgot to mention is that if I unplug this printer and plug it back in, it will resume your print. And that's actually a pretty cool feature. Alright, moving on. So here I have the TiVo Tornado. This one looks like the CR10 S3. However, it comes with many different features. Some of those features that are different is it is 24 volt, which the CR10 is not. And the bed is heated with AC power. So this printer by far out of all my other printers heats up much quicker. It's also using a Titan extruder housing, a Titan V6 hot end. I'm not entirely sure if they're just clones Chinese clones or not but it is using those features so underneath this green sheet right here this build tack is temper glass and I went ahead and put a mirror on top of it just because I didn't want to rip this off because this is very useful for prints that I'm gonna test with polycarbonate and PETG I like to print on this type of this build tack surface but for projects like this I, I just like printing on glass it's easier upgrades to this printer that I've done first thing was I added OctoPrint to it a Raspberry Pi and then with the OctoPrint software on there and then I made a design and made this little like stand and then you could put your own case on it and all that kind of stuff that was the first upgrade that I did second was the mirror and third was the BL touch. When printers start having big beds like this, this is when I like to have an auto level system. I also upgraded the firmware originally to Marlin 1.18. However, I was 
not getting as good quality prints as I was with the stock firmware. So my CR10 is running Marlin 1.16, so I downgraded to 1.16 for the TiVo Tornado, and now it is printing to my satisfaction. Also, the TiVo Tornado is able to print TPU stock where the, where the CR10 was not. I'm not too entirely sure about the new series like the CR10S, if that's able to print TPU, but, I, but this one can print TPU and for me, TPU is very important. So to show off a couple prints that I have done with this printer, a large bearing. And it turned out pretty good. This, I printed this little like mini Titanic boat and this is with PETG and I scaled it up it, and it turned out better than I thought. The one thing that this printer does very well is TPU. This right here is TPU and you can tell but because it can bend all over and all that kind of stuff. And this little boat turned out amazing. And it was a good test for anything because I do a lot of stuff with quadcopters and remote control airplanes and all that kind of stuff and TPU is a very useful material for that kind of stuff and this print proves that it can print TPU very well, it could bridge it very well, and it turned out really good. And then, just for fun, I printed a little TPU lizard, and you could just bend it all over, and this one actually turned out really smooth. So this printer prints TPU very well. So here I have the Creality CR10, and this is the CR10, not the CR10S, or anything like that. I purchased this, this printer well over a year ago and probably have the most hours of print time than any other printer I own. I mean, I'm, I'm well over a thousand hours on this printer and it, it has served me very well, but it is also my most heavily modified printer. One of the first upgrades that I have done, and this was over a year ago as well, was the ABL kit. I was having problems with a flat bed. My bed wasn't flat, it was all warped and all that kind of stuff. So I added Timothy's ABL kit, purchased it from him, and this works very well. Because to this day, this bed is still a little warped, but it works very well. Another upgrade was, a major upgrade, was removing all the fans from the hot end to the park cooler to all the fans in this unit right here and I put much quieter fans. These fans right here are really quiet but they don't blow as hard so my hot end gets a little warm on those fins whereas before it was nice and cool. However I've been printing on it like uh, with this this type of upgrade for a long time and had no issues with my prints. And ma a matter of fact here is a PETG print and this has to be one of my favorite prints that I've done on this printer. It's like it's a large little tugboat and it just turned out so smooth. And I am really happy with how this turned out. And I'm using Hatchbox PETG orange. And it just looks so nice. And that's what I'm printing with right now is Hatchbox orange PETG for this other boat that I'm doing. And I also printed something of my own design and this is a a little like gimbal that holds a GoPro and I'm able to control it right here and this also turned out very nice so I am not concerned that the fins on my uh, hot end are a little warm because it still works very well and I can still touch it it's not hot to the touch it's just not as cool as it was before Another major upgrade was upgrading to E3D V6 hot end. And the reasoning for that was I wanted an all metals hot end so I could print with polycarbonate and I had an extra one for another printer that I had a long time ago. So the actual control board in here fried on me. Well, a portion of the board fried. And I, I still don't know to this day what happened, but basically I, I found where on the board it, it burned up on. And it was a voltage regulator. 
on the Melzi board. And so basically that would take the 12 volts and regulate it down to five volts. And so what I did was just tap power in one of the other three spots where you could put five volts into the board. And that's what I did and to this day it works. I've been meaning to buy a replacement board for this, but if it works, then why spend the why spend the money? Other upgrades that help with with noise is stepper motor dampers. I have it on the X and the Y axis. Other than that, I was thinking about future upgrades on this, which would be converting it to a 24 volt system. But honestly, I probably will not do that. I'll just keep it how it is because it does work very well. So why change something if it's working good? One thing that I still don't like about this printer, well, two things, is I print at 50 millimeters per second just on PLA and 45 millimeters per second on PETG and 30 millimeters per second with TPU. And it takes a very long time to heat up the bed and the hot end as well. I also upgraded the firmware to Marlin 1.16. With that said, let's move on to the last printer. So here I have the Creality CR8. And this printer is a very nice printer. You, it gives you the quality that you expect from Creality. And I printed this Dragon with it and it turned out pretty good. But what makes this printer very interesting is that it comes with a laser engraver and it's magnetic and it just attaches right to this uh, housing the the hot end housing and then uh, there's a plug in the back where you just plug this in and it works actually pretty well and I just found out recently that I can engrave PVC cards with it and you can kind of you you can see the lines in it, and I was just doing tests with it, just to see if it would actually engrave P PVC cards, and it does. So I was actually really excited about that. It does wood, um, so wood and PVC, and actually 3D prints are the only things I've tested it on, and it will engrave all three of those. I have done no upgrades on this printer whatsoever, and it works really well works as you expect it's a little pricey as what I don't like about this printer is the laser engraver software it is very difficult to get this printer to engrave and I've been looking into recently different software that I can use to engrave the problem is it's not using a, a signal pin that would be normally for a laser engraver it's using the fan signal so long story short, I'm just trying to find a good software to engrave uh, with this printer. And actually, if, if any of you know a good software to engrave with this printer, please let me know because <laughs> I've been looking. But other than that, this is a good little printer. Again, it's a little pricey, but it is a two-on-one printer. So that concludes my video. I would like to hear what you guys think about these printers, any upgrades that you have done to any one of these printers. I'm kind of interested on the upgrades that other people do with these printers. And, and if you know a good laser engraving software that would work with the CR8, please let me know. Uh, other than that, thank you guys for your support. Thank you guys for watching. All right, I almost forgot. The Creality Ender 3 first TPU print is done. And I'm ready to show it off. Here it is. And... It is absolutely gorgeous. There is a little stringing, but that is expected with TPU. And they're easy to get away. You, I usually just put a little heat gun, or put a little heat from a heat gun on it, and usually just melts away the, any strings. But this turned out very, very nice. Actually, almost looks better than my TiVo Tornadoes TPU prints. It's so smooth can barely see the lines and as you can see I can bend it any way smash it up and it just comes right back and 
which is why TPU is one of my favorite materials to print with. So I really like this Ender 3. It's only been a week, but I, I can tell already that I'm going to like this printer. Alright, until next time.